Today we're going to paint watercolour scene of Mumble's head, which is the trip that I take every week for my art class. Here you can see I've drawn out the trunks and put down some masking fluid on the middle ones and some wax on the right. And, I've, and then I've put a little wash of yellow ochre over the trunks. I'm now putting on a light green wash over the foreground and then I'm going on to the sky. I've put a wash over the sky with a very light wash of raw sienna over the horizon and then I'm going to put a very strong cerulean wash on the top, clean the brush and then start grading that down. I'm taking a dry brush of cerulean blue across the sea so that adds sparkle and light and then you can see how I'm mixing the green. So the cerulean and the lemon yellow are for the bright green and then I've taken the raw sienna with cerulean and mixing that for more olive green for the headland in the background because you don't want to have that a very bright green. You want it very soft in the background to add to the aerial perspective. Next, I'm going to take a darker green. The best way to do this is to actually add a little tiny bit of red to make it a really dark, rich green, or you can add a Payne's gray or blue if you want. A terra vert from a tube is good, but do add some other color to it to give it some depth. I'm taking a big brush and actually using broken brush strokes for the shadows from the trunks to actually give the ground some form and so to make it look natural because grass isn't like grass is not like glass. You know, you've got that sort of unevenness underfoot. Then I'm adding some blue to the green the same blue in the sky, so it kind of in the same tonal range, and a smaller brush, so that, again, you've got the smaller brush, smaller strokes in the background, and bigger strokes and a, with a bigger brush in the foreground to add to the aerial perspective and to the range of marks. And you can see that I've added a bigger hedge on the left, and then I'm taking a burnt umber, a strong chocolatey brown, thick, sticky. It's got to be sticky, not watery. Consistent. And I'm putting that very carefully along the thick trunk. And then I'm taking a card while it's still wet. And I am just very carefully going from left to right where the light is hitting. But be very, very, very careful doing this technique because you might ruin your sky. I'm not going to lie. It has happened to me. I certainly wouldn't use that on the smaller trunks because it can be actually quite tricky then if it's too stripy or you find it too strong you can always take a small brush damp brush and you can actually soften some of the areas tease out some of the stronger brown and actually make it a little bit more muted if you so wish And you can see I'm doing that to the right side of the trunk where the shadow is. So it has a little bit more gradation in it. The next, we're going to take a smaller brush and we're going to add the same brown. We're going to start from the bottom, working up. Always start from the bottom with trees, by the way, um, because as you go up the trunk and into the branches, you want it to become less. And when you tend to put a brush down first off, you tend to apply heavier pressure. So you can tend to be the brush stroke can be thicker or heavier. And so it's better for the base of the trunk to have that rather than the thin 
delicate branches at the top. So work your way up. You can see there's actually some of the sides being protected by masking fluid and we will actually, um, I'll show you how to deal with that later. So just keep on going up and don't worry about broken branches. Actually, that looks much more realistic. Make them uneven and a little, sometimes they can be a little bit angular. Apply light and heavy pressure and just work your way across each trunk. So the three trunks in the middle or is it four? The four trunks in the middle, sorry, have got masking fluid on them. And the two trunks, the one trunk on the right has got wax. Now, I do have to say that I do under know that I have got six trunks. And I should have an uneven number. And because I realized this, later on in the painting, I will actually be adding another trunk to the right it's always best to have an uneven trunks and uneven trees or an uneven number of objects in your painting it just adds um, more interest and it will help the viewer actually look around the painting explore the painting with their eyes rather than just if you have an even number of painting uh, of objects it can actually hinder the painting A really good tip actually also is if you've got wax on, use wax on the tree, you want to use light and heavy pressure because otherwise you'll get really thick lines. And also you can see here that uh, where I put the paint, it's the wax is actually retaining the color of the raw sienna underneath. And that is because I put the raw sienna first, let it dry then put the wax, a little bit of wax on the top, just on the right, not all over the trunk. And then I put on that the shadow side of the trunk. Next, we're going to be mixing a light green, as I have done before. I used cerulean and lemon yellow, and I have switched to a Chinese brush and this is the fun part where you're actually going to use the Chinese brush the point of it to literally dance across the page and you want to create a lovely flicking mo movements using light and heavy pressure and around the top of what I have done is I've made put thicker foliage the top rice area you don't want to actually, when you put paint foliage, you don't want to create an even mass. You don't want to create, to paint the same tr tree, the same shape, the same size trunk, the same branches. You want to create a lovely, varied foliage. And so what I have done is I've got the thicker trunk on the left side, and then I've got thicker foliage on the right to create a balance. And the thicker foliage is near the trunk. And as you can see, to the edge of the canopy, there are lighter, tinier, smaller marks because you don't want heavy, heavy paint strokes at the edge of a tea. It'll make it look too heavy. Then I've mixed some of that darker green and I've used the same strokes to go over, but less. And so you've got the lightness of the sky coming through and the light green. I'm actually also going in a diagonal, a slight diagonal, if you can see here, moving across. And I'm actually now taking down the foliage towards the mumble's head. So you're leading, I want to lead the viewer's eye towards the mumble head and give it a framework. So not only is it being framed by the trunks, but it also has this halo effect of greenery around the top. So you're creating that sort of lovely 
sort of round focus that you're guiding the viewer to look through the trees. And those little tiny dots at the end really gives um, an elegant look to the canopy and it doesn't appear heavy and dark because this is a beautiful summer's day. Just keep slowly building up. You can look in the mirror. As a really good tip is to look in the mirror to see that everything is right. And if there's anything that's standing out that shouldn't be that you need to deal with. And also go away from it for a while. Have a cup of tea. Look at it the next day. The next, I'm going to be adding another diagonal from the left downwards. And so you've got all these diagonals pointing very gently, very subtly towards the headland. The headland's very delicate, it's very light in the background. You can really hardly see it at all, but it's actually, but it's still a focal point. You can still, it's, your eye is being led through the picture. Next, we've taken off the masking fluid of the trunks in the middle, and I'm going to take a damp brush and with a little bit of brown on it, and I'm just adding some gentle shadows on the left side only. So you want to make sure that all the shadows are consistent on each of the trunks. All of the shadows are on the left side. And yes, I do know that the shadows are coming through from the the right, but that is actually from other trees, if you can see here. So I'm just going to add the path wall with a little bit of blue that's been dampened down with a tiny little bit of brown across here. I think we're in the final phases now. So I hope you enjoyed and please subscribe to Art Class with Zoe.